Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrials down 11, Nasdaq's up 30, S&Ps are up 4.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at uh, 20, at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on? Good morning, guys. Pretty interesting uh, action in the currency markets today, I would say. Yeah, you got some big movements in that euro, man. That was a fast move, no doubt, right? Well, you know, with the ECB not doing anything with rates, I think that was probably one of the biggest things that uh, kind of got the move. Um, now, if you guys look at the uh, the U.S. dollar Swiss, that's like above parity again, and it, right now the market's bid. At least it was the last I checked at it. Before, okay. Uh, there. So. So right now you have the, uh, the, the U.S. dollars above parity with Swiss. That's a nice reason the dollar index is high. The euro is selling off. But interestingly, if you look at the, at the sell-off in the euro, it was much lower before, and now it's coming back. Yeah, interesting. Okay. While it, the other ones are still bid. Now, there's, I was kind of wondering, I'm like, why is it looking like that? And then I looked at the euro, at the, uh, excuse me, the euro Swiss, and the euro Swiss has been nothing but rallying for the past month. So it's pretty interesting to see how the, the Swiss is falling to the dollar more than the euro actually is today. Yeah, that's interesting, man. So what do you think, you know, when I was looking at that, it almost looked like the euro wanted to move high the last few days, Teddy, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to correlate it with, okay, does that have anything to do with Brexit, non-Brexit? Do you know what I mean? It's like the euro seemed like it was going to be happy when Brexit was going out for a year. Do you know what I mean? Then Draghi came out this morning and says, okay, I'm not that happy, man. Uh, you know, I, I want to get to lower price because that euro at that 112.16 is a kind of a dangerous place for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's flirting with that 11 half area, which seems to be the bounce point for the, for the market right, yeah, right, right now. Yeah, right, right. Um, so I, I agree with you. I think that a couple of days ago I was looking at the euro and I'm just like, wow, this really seems like this slow creeping little bull may try and extend itself. And then, of course, over the past couple of days, it fizzled. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, and I, th I think that that has more to do with some of the numbers coming out. And then you had the, the deal. I mean, Brexit's supposed to happen Friday, right? You know, and now with these ridiculous talks about extending it a year. And I actually had an interesting conversation over the weekend with someone who's uh, from Switzerland. And they, they're actually a trader, but they live in Dubai. And I asked them, like, what would be if they just did the Brexit Friday and just said, okay, Brexit's over, but we're just going to deal with these things on a day-to-day -day basis and just address them as they come. Wouldn't that be a seamless way of moving on and making everything happen? And he said that's what people wish would happen, because that would be common sense. Okay. But the thing is, the EU doesn't want to let go of the UK. Right. That's ultimately what the thing is. Yeah, you no, know? It's, listen, man, power never likes to let go of anything. You know, you have to take it. I mean, that's, that's, that's a, yeah, it's a... <laughs> It is right. what it is, right? They're part of the organization. Right. You know, you want you want organizations as big as you can be if you're a bureaucrat, right? Sure. So, yeah. sure. And the thing is, the, the UK has always maintained the pound, so their, their their ability to leave the EU should be actually a seamless one, you know. And it's not being one, so that actually I think is also scary for the rest of the EU countries, you know, which also starts to weigh on the euro because. Not coming to a deal is not good for the EU either, because it means that they're they're not willing to compromise. Right. Yeah. Right. And even inside of the, the couple of the press releases they put out, it seems like the EU is worried that even they give them the extension. Now, now, don't mess with our business when I give you this extension. Do you know what I mean? For the next year, you know. And I'm not quite sure how they can mess with their business, but um. <laughs> <laughs> well, they get to vote, man. They they're they're an active player. Yeah. Would, you know. I okay. Mean, that's what. Right. A member of the EU for that year. Right. That's, so right. See if we'll and look see. at the pound dollar right now. Today, with the with the dollar rally going on, it's pretty neutral. It's not doing anything. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I know so exactly. I just, just, just laying there at one thirty seventy three. Yeah. Right. And it's just like a flat line, just a little range trade, you know. So it'll be interesting if the, if if the dollar Swiss stays above parity, settles higher. You know, and can continue over the next couple of days. Well, then the, obviously the trend is pretty solid, and the, there's a, a bull in place. You know, um, but I think really it's kind of skittish. You know, I think it's just a little news reactionary, trying to figure out what's coming out with Brexit. 
that where nothing really is there. You know, I mean, most of your currencies, you got the pound, you got the yen, you got the Australian dollar and the Canada. They're basically stuck in range trades. Yeah, I just, you know, just as you were speaking, man, I just brought the, the Swiss franc up, you know, going back to 2000 and. FOA, and this thing's been in the same place for, uh, what, 2011. Man, that's a, that's a tight range for that, isn't it? Right. Wow. Exactly. So it's just because the ranges have gotten, we're gotten so used to it, things look volatile where they're at now, but if you really, like you said, look at that, they haven't been going anywhere. Look, so at one point, that's amazing, actually. So at one point, the, the Swiss was $1.80 to the dollar? Yep. Wow. And then 2000 mm -hmm. happened. Right. <laughs> That's I mean seriously quite a fall off from that level, yeah. Holy cow. Right. Got, that's that's man, the burgers then must have been worth a fortune. No, no, it's just the opposite, right? So a dollar eighty is a dollar eighty to a dollar is that stronger or a, a weaker Swiss? That would be weaker. That's weaker, so, okay. Yeah. So so the burgers will so now the burgers are more expensive. Right. right. I, oh, my God. Yeah. Right. $50 <laughs> for a Big Mac over there, right? <laughs> you know, Absolutely. I'm exaggerating a little, but you hear the stories. The, oh, stories, are, the stories are pretty amazing, right? Right. Sure. Sure. So what else do you think we should be looking at in the, in the next couple coming weeks here? Um, actually, I got a trade for you. It's setting up. The oh. uh, New Zealand dollar, uh, U.S. dollar trade. Um, if you look at that chart, um, they stamped the low a few days ago, and then over the past few sessions, the past two days, they settled slightly higher, just a little bit. And today, it's flirting with just being slightly negative, slightly positive. Okay. So if, they get, if they can get a slightly positive close today, and then tomorrow, if you look, look at where, where they're, they're near those lows, if they can take out that low from three days ago with a sell-off, which is possible with some numbers that are coming out tomorrow, which there, there could be some action in that market, actually all the currencies. So if the bears come out and take that out tomorrow, then you're probably looking at an, an extended bear trend for probably the next week or so, maybe even two weeks. So you can really see it take out some uh, heavy support levels then. Yeah, and I can see uh, going back there, so we're at 67. Going back there, what, in December, or, or January, uh, 65. Yeah. That's, this whole currency market is so intriguing, man. It's a lot of variables. There's Isn't always that? a trade somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the Chinese won, though, that's not tradable, right? Is that because they have such controls over it? Well, no, you can, there's, there's FX products on that. You can trade the one. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah. yeah. Pretty wild. I would do it. I'd stay away from that. No, no for sure. I, would, I just wanted to know more than anything. Do you know what I mean? Do you have an inside track in the Chinese government? You know what's coming next? No. Maybe that'd be <laughs> would that be good, right? <laughs> that would be the ultimate. Listen, folks, you can uh, check out Teddy every trading day, forex dash trading dash on lock.com teddy you have a great week safe week i'm sure you're elated that it's spring up there you can out look out right. lake michigan get a little bit warmer for you right. absolutely have a great one man have a safe one thanks teddy yeah. thanks teddy stay right there folks tommy and i come right back we have the dow industrials down 14 nasdaq's up 38 s&p's are up five and a half we'll come right back